Hi, this is Sarah Russell, and today I'm going to continue the little series of um, mini videos that, that I'm putting together on effective strategies to, um, to launch or grow your practice as a practitioner. And today I want to talk specifically about if some of the time management tools that I use. So one of one of the biggest struggles for anybody who is freelancing, self-employed, or an entrepreneur, including holistic health practitioners who are working for themselves, is effectively managing time. Um, it, in the holistic health field, we put in we tend to put in a lot of work hours, especially those of us who are exclusively or primarily doing work in the holistic health field, and it, it is really easy for time to get away from us. It's also easy as somebody who is self-employed to kind of um, struggle with a sense of how you manage your time so that you're getting um, good results because you are wearing so many hats all at once and you're integrating many different skills when you're running your own practice, especially at the beginning, if you are a one person so if you are a solopreneur, so um, at first you are probably managing a number of tasks that include um, creating and managing your website, um, having a social media presence and posting on social media to connect with prospective clients and to follow up with people who might be following your posts. Um, you're also talking with uh, with your clients, you're probably having some kind of a discovery call uh, that you offer to prospects who want to learn more about what it looks like to work with you. And then you're also conducting your sessions and, and um, creating written documents, templates, and handouts for your clients in addition to likely having some kind of a follow-up process in between sessions. That is a lot to integrate. Um, even if you aren't doing many of the other things that a lot of holistic health practitioners are doing, including engaging in continuing education, attending conferences, um, whether remotely or in person, depending on what the situation is, um, you know, from, um, from an epidemi epidemiologic perspective, and also in terms of, you know, what your location is and, and whatnot. Um, so it's, a tremendous amount of um, of tasks that you're balancing. So as your practice grows, you are definitely going to want to start outsourcing some of the um, some of the tasks. I didn't even talk about bookkeeping. Um, so you know, even just managing the keeping good financial records so that you are um, filing taxes appropriately and without stress at the um, at you know, at the appropriate time of year. Um, these are all key aspects. So some of the things that I have come to outsource um, include um, website maintenance. Um, I My um, technology skills are pretty good, but there are certain advanced things like coding that I just really don't do. And it's not a good efficient use of my time to try and do my own uh, backend work. So I, I have a person who manages anything that is over my head. Um, if I try doing something and I struggle, I just email her and say, hey, help me out. This is a task. And, and I am so happy to pay her hourly rate um, because it saves me both time and money. Additionally, from, from the very start of my practice, I also sought out uh, a person who um, taught me how to use QuickBooks. That is the method of bookkeeping that I use. And she she was so gracious and she, you know, she just basically gave me in-person tutorials on how, how to track my, uh, my transactions. And she goes over my, um, my books every three to six months, depending on um, what type of volume I'm doing. And if I notice any weird discrepancies between uh, what my, what QuickBooks thinks that has happened versus what I'm actually seeing in, in my bank account that does sometimes happen. And I will not, I literally don't let myself waste endless 
hours searching for the missing piece of data. I just write my bookkeeper and say, hey, would you please reconcile my books um, a little early this time because I'm, I'm really struggling to understand what happened here. And we find a date, I sent her my, uh, my files and she sends me everything reconciled. It is such a good use of, of my money and it really helps me save time. There are there literally will be, depending on what your talents and struggles are, areas of your practice that that will represent an incredible time and money investment for you to outsource. So I highly recommend that you um, identify based on the strengths and weaknesses that you have as an individual and as a practitioner um, that you that you draft the um, the tasks that you're going to source out to other people who are experts in, in that area and, um, and, and calculate how much time that will free up for you to work with clients, grow your practice and really enjoy your work. It's so important not to spend endless hours frustrated, trying to do things that are just over your head or not even interesting or, um, or, um, you know, enjoyable for you to do. So, um, that is one of the most important uh, points that I that I want to make. Um, additionally, you know, for me, managing my time effectively means outsourcing social media management. I I uh, write almost all of my social media content, um, but I have a virtual um, a, a, a virtual office manager who um, helps me strategize. Uh, launches, helps me figure out, you know, what the appropriate sequencing and dates are based on what my goals and objectives are, um, and then helps me kind of uh, fine tune my content. She also does all the scheduling and posting of my social media posts. And then I go in a couple, at least, you know, a couple times a week and, and respond to people's comments and messages. I do like to do that part myself. At some point, I may even outsource that piece. I don't know. Um, I do try to get most people to contact me off of social media. That is also really helpful for me. I prefer to be contacted via email. I actually don't have a smartphone. And I think that is an incredible time saver for me, just not having one. It's really good in, for me in terms of my work and life balance. It, You know, um, when I see people who are... Um, self-employed, especially holistic health practitioners or other people who are dedicated service professionals, it can be really, really difficult uh, when you have a phone in your pocket or in your in your purse or, or your backpack that is constantly buzzing. Um, it is really hard to, to really separate work from, uh, you know, your professional life from your personal life. It's almost like there is no division. I know that when I open my computer, that work is starting. And then I know when I close my computer that work is ending. Um, I like to have a sense of what my time schedule is going to be. I like to um, plan ahead. I know that every day is different, but I really do like to have a sense of how I'm actively managing my time over the course of the day on the basis of objectives that I have. Um, you know, I, I like to set goals and objectives and targets at the big, you know, kind of from uh, different in different chunks of time. So, for example, I have goals, objectives, and targets for the year, for the quarter, for the month, and for the week. And then every day I have a sense based on what my goals and objectives are of what, how to organize and prioritize my tasks. Um, I try to be as efficient as possible in my work while also being complete and conscientious. Um, it can be a tough balance to strike. It's important to cut yourself off if you're finding yourself spending endless hours um, doing kind of fiddly things, you know, are you on a wild goose chase? Maybe you are. So, you know, if, if you're trying to answer a question for someone um, and you're you're really going down a rabbit hole and you're really struggling to find the answer, reach out to other practitioners um, in your field who might know that piece of information. It is so nice to have a community of people who can support each other because we often will know different things. You know, I might know some things that you don't know. You might know some things that I don't know. And then our colleague so-and-so may know stuff that neither of us knows and we can learn from each other. And that is a really effective way of, um, of spending time, you know, just talking to other practitioners and being part of a community. You don't want to do that for endless hours either though. So 
um, you know, just have a sense of how your day is flowing, what you're doing and why you're doing it. And then also, you know, when, when you, um, when your day ends, when your work day ends, you really want to also balance that with um, enjoying your personal life. Um, if you find that you are working so hard and doing such a great job for your clients that you are neglecting your own personal health needs, your own you know, emotional health needs, um, or your social needs, uh, a need to exercise, a need to you know, have uh, balanced meals and also have um, you know, peaceful meal times where you are sitting down to eat at breakfast, lunch, and dinner, ideally, unless you're doing some kind of a particular protocol for your own health that is having you on a different eating schedule than normal. You do not want to delay your meals tremendously you want, you, you literally just want to have a normal flow to your day so that you are functioning well on a physical and an emotional level as an individual. This is really important for time management because if you, if your nervous system is stressed by poor lifestyle and by the fact that you are running yourself ragged, taking care of other people and forgetting your own needs, then you're, you're going to burn out. And that's very poor use of time. <laughs> I tend to overwork. So this is something that I, I do have to keep in the back of my mind, you know, um, I have to have a, a, you know, a sense of what are the non-negotiable things that I'm doing for myself on a daily basis. And there have been times where I've noticed that I'm not doing certain things, you know, like having enough, uh, getting enough regular exercise, um, or, you know, sometimes I would skip lunch or, um, you know, or go to bed too late, uh, guilty as charged because I was up, you know, finishing all the things that I wanted to do for all the people. Um, but what about me? That's really important. I mean, I, there is going to be no me to help others if I'm not managing my time in such a way as to balance my needs with the needs of the people that I'm serving. Um, so first and foremost, I think that it's really important to keep this in mind. You know, know what your non-negotiable self-care regimen is going to be and I do, I'm not talking about a bubble bath or you know like scented candles or anything uh like frivolous like that you can totally do that if you, if you like it and it lights you up but I'm talking about you know are you are you feeding yourself are you resting are you having fun and that is not frivolous enjoying your life I had such a hard time uh even allowing myself as an adult um to give myself permission to to do enjoyable things but that has really changed my life and it has improved the overall quality of my work-life balance and it makes me a better professional. The moment that, that you are able to look at yourself in the mirror and saying, I am a well-rounded um, person or you know, at least really working hard to get there and I've, I've really improved in this area, you, can, you are more credible as a professional. It is even more important than learning all of the key scientific and biochemical facts um, because when you, when you can lead by example, you can be compelling when you teach your clients to take care of themselves. Um, if you are telling your clients eat balanced meals and you're not doing it, there's going to be something broken in the connection between you and the client because you're, there is something hypocritical in what you're doing. Um, and I'm not saying this in any judgmental way. It just means that you're giving advice that you're not taking. So whenever you give advice to somebody, you know, rest enough, eat in a balanced way, sit down for your meals, um, you know, whatever it is that you're telling people to do, avoid, um, you know, avoid excessive use of stimulants, drink enough water, all of these things. Whenever you find yourself recommending something and you realize you're not doing it, write that down, right? This is a non-negotiable. I'm going to go back to drinking, you know, X number of um, ounces or liters per day of water. And I'm going to take care of myself because I'm just as important as my clients. And I'm going to be a better practitioner when I'm taking care of myself. And all of these things are going to help you manage your time better, because I can guarantee you that if you don't have time to drink water, if you don't have time to feel hungry at meal times and to fill your plate with, with, uh, warming and nourishing foods that help you feel calm and balanced um, as you're eating them and after you eat, you're not managing your time well. There's something going wrong. So 
Um, and then, you know, from kind of this broad whole person perspective, let's zoom in on some specific tools that I find incredibly useful in managing my time. So again, you need to have a sense of your overall objectives and a sense of your work-life balance in order for a tool to, to be used appropriately. I enjoy using uh, time trackers, um, like um, I, I use rescue time personally. I find it to be a really good value and, and to give me what I need. Um, it will help you track all of your um, time on your computer or other devices that you connect to, um, to, the, um, to the rescue time program. Um, in my case, I only have my computer. I don't have anything else that I, I don't have any other devices that I use for work or, or for anything else. Um, it is my one and only device. So that is really simple and easy for me. But if you have a smartphone, you, if you have a tablet or something like that, and you use those for, you know, either work or recreational purposes, you'll want to connect those devices as well to your rescue time account or whatever uh, time management account that you're using. And it will really help you have an objective and unskewed, and kind of scary sometimes at the beginning, look at how you are actually spending your time. Because you may think that you're spending X number of hours a day writing, and you may find out that you're actually writing less than half that amount of time. You could think that your social media time is only, I don't know, 45 minutes a day, but you might actually find out that it is more than two hours. Um, so that can really help you um, have a reality check and then replan so that you're resetting your goals. So for example, you know, if, if you, <laughs> you get your first weekly report from your time uh, management uh, tracker and it tells you that you're doing something that you know that you would rather not do like you're um, only engaged in productive tasks for half the time that you're on the computer what are you going to change and how are you going to change that and why um, so these are all really useful things to think about um, and um I'm not going to go into additional detail now because I don't really want to go, uh, I don't want to waste your time and make this video too long for you. But, um, you know, if you're struggling with uh, time management as a holistic health practitioner, I would really love to have you in my upcoming mentoring group, Foundations in Practice. Uh, so please uh, contact me if you want more information and, um, and to sign up because um, we're really going to go into uh, specific um, and even individualized uh, approaches to um, helping manage your time better and, and getting better results so that you have more time to be a well-balanced, well-rounded, credible, and effective practitioner in 2021, which I think is, I think this is a great year for us to grow as practitioners after, you know, the, the, the year that 2020 ended up being. So, uh, let's make this a great year and I would love to have you in my group. So please reach out and, um, and uh, get in touch with any questions and uh, comments that you have. Thanks a lot. Bye.